I guess the, the backstory here is as part of working on the CI, um, I spent a lot of time finding out how to run this thing. Um, and I did develop a few, a few uh, dirty one-liners left and right to be able to do things I need to do. Uh, and I'm going to go through that. Um, so essentially, there is three topics here. One is um, local development, um, how to quickly iterate into um, building and running BPF tests uh, from your local machine. But in some cases, CI fails how to get a repro environment just like um, what is produced by the CI or run by the CI. And finally, um, how to um, use cross compilation to, to be able to uh, troubleshoot something that may fail on the architecture you don't have uh, a hand on. Um, there is a few requirements. Uh, a recent Ubuntu, uh, which is not too recent. When I went through the steps on 23.10, uh, uh, 24.04, sorry, it failed. But I know it works on 20.04, which is what we run in CI, and it works on 23.10, which is what I was playing with. Um, VM test from Daniel, uh, the latest version, 0.12. Um, the, uh, the VM file system needs to have QEMU guest agent installed, uh, either Docker or Docker2FS, which is a small program I wrote to get uh, a Docker image without using Docker. Um, a Docker, yeah, to, to be able to build rootfs if needed. Be an FMT because uh, at some stage we may need to run a foreign architecture binary uh, on the host. And well, we talk about virtualization, so QEMU in general. So yeah, um, usually developments involve hacking, typing code, building it, testing it, and seeing that it doesn't work, or at least in my case. Um, and then you go back to hacking and stuff. So if I can make the testing as fast as possible, it saves me a lot of time. And I, so that's kind of what I try to do here. So local development, I guess, Everybody here knows how to build BPF and test it, and probably everybody has their own flavor of how to do it. Um, so in my case, essentially, I get the, I kind of mimic what the CI does. So I get the different configs from uh, tool testing, self-test BPF config, um, and I make the kernel, and then I make the self-test. And then the last step, you don't want to do it because every so often you're going to crash your uh, machine, and that makes you sad. So that's where you use a VM. Um, and with VM tests, essentially, you can just use the one-liner where you go VM test, here's my kernel, and here's the command I want to run in my VM, and that's going to run it. So you could run the different test prog, test verifier, and test map. There's a few assumptions about the system that uh, BPF test does. Um, and uh, essentially, you need to have the CSFS BPF um, pseudo file system mounted. And you also need to have uh, uh, um, the loopback uh, up and running. Otherwise, some tests may fail for when they're not really failing. But um, a nice thing, too, is you can actually get a shell, uh, because sometimes tests fail, and it's hard to really know why they fail. So if you change the command with a dash, then you get essentially a shell on the VM using your local file system, so whatever tools you have locally, you can reuse them in the VM, um, except that you're running the, the kernel you just built. So you may rerun that uh, bash script uh, I shown before and, and get a shell and with everything which is set up. And these, for instance, are actually um, the, the comments on the right is pretty much what I had to use to reproduce the step of one of the flaky tests and understand that um, ICMP v6 packets were making it through, which was why we were not reading what we expected from the network. And uh, another nice trick is uh, sometimes you just need to iterate on the test. You don't need to rebuild the kernel every time. So you could essentially get um, uh, Root, uh, shell prompt and run your test and then if it doesn't work you can modify the test rebuild them which is much much faster than rebuilding your kernel in general and rerun them without having to go out of the VM you're just already in the VM and whatever you compile on the host is going to be exposed in the VM so you can just like iterate quickly like add print statements or whatever you want 
uh, and then uh, eventually gets from a failing test to a successful test, or run whatever uh, BPF program in that destination kernel. And I think my favorite to look smart when I'm not um, is git bisect. Um, so you can essentially using the script on the left where you, you essentially tell by uh, git bisect your good commit, your bad one, and then you tell it to run a script. And you know if your script returns one, it's bad. If it returns zero, it's good. If it returns 125, it doesn't know. Um, so here, the, essentially in that script, you build the kernel, you build a self-test, and you run the repro you have, which is in this case running a specific test. And VM test is going to return the error code that was returned by the command in the one-liner. So you can just essentially at this stage go, get git bisect and uh, go and relax somewhere else and not make use of your repository because it's going to be busy for some time. But um, yeah, then you can find what introduced a specific error and look smart when you're not. Um, Finally, this, well, not finally, but um, on the uh, BPF CI hack. So how, there is an error in the CI, how can I reproduce it, this environment when I have something totally different and I cannot repro re reproduce it locally? Um, so here, essentially, there is a few steps. One is to get the artifacts from GitHub, um, get the rootfs that we use uh, in the CI, use VM test to Get access to the CI or run stuff in. Uh, get access to the um, to the VM that would have been used by the CI, and do whatever you need to do. So to get artifacts from the CI, essentially, um, you from the uh, from the the GitHub page uh, where the CI runs, you get a run ID which is in the URL here in red. Um, and you got a list of artifacts that have been generated. Um, so essentially a bunch of VM Linux dash architecture dash uh, uh, compiler. Um, we need to use, well we can, you could download it directly to your, uh, um, to your machine, but you can use the GitHub uh, command and then essentially you use GitHub command, uh, GitHub run on that repository for this run ID, I want this artifact and put it into this uh, download directory. You uh, uncompress that, and at the end of these commands, essentially you got the kernel which is available in the kbuild output architecture, the architecture in question, boot and busy image or whatever. And the self-tests are going to be in the self-test BPF um, repository. Then we need to get a rootfs, but you cannot, because you cannot run that on your local machine unless you run the same uh, OS that uh, the CI. Uh, and anyway, in the end, you may be missing some tools that are expected from the CI. So if you don't have Docker, uh, which for some reason was a case uh, to deal with, um, you can use my tool Docker root to rootfs, which is going to pull essentially from a Docker repository the image and untie it, which creates essentially a rootfs. Or if you have Docker, you can use a combination of Docker pool and creating an instance that is not really running to be able to then export it. Um, there's no a good way to directly go from an image to, to, uh, to rootfs. But um, the command here essentially allows you to do that. So now we got our kernel, uh, our self-test, and our rootfs um, directory with the with the the CI rootfs. So using VM test dash k, we pass the kernel dash r to tell it where the rootfs is. And in this case, we're running um, a different a foreign architecture as a target, so we need to specify it. And here again, you can pass it a dash if you want to get a, um, a root prompt, or you can pass um, the command you want to run, and, and VM test is going to start the kernel, run the command, and exit with the reuse of result code, and, and everything is spit it out to, to your terminal. And finally, sometimes it's great to be able to do that, but it doesn't give you enough, and you actually need to change the, the um, either the kernel or the test, and you need to recompile stuff. Um, so as much as when you get the artifact from the CI, you can reproduce, but you can't really 
if you need to recompile, you, you need to you need to do it yourself. Um, so to do that, every OS, I guess, um, have their own subtleties. Um, in the case of Debian-based, it's kind of pretty easy-ish to install libraries for foreign architectures. Um, so assuming Ubuntu, you add um, the, repository definition, the repository definition for the platform you want to compile for. You need to add this architecture to, for DPKG to know about it and then install those, um, those uh, packages. So essentially, you want to install the GCC G++ tool chains for the architecture. And then we need to have libfdev, libsslDev, and pkgconf for the destination architecture. Along with QMU user static, which for Ubuntu does provide BNFMT, I believe, um, and QMU in general. And to build, um, you essentially need to specify, I guess the K-build output is, um, is optional here. Um, my experience is don't use O equal as part of the make comment um, because it, I guess the definition of that variable is lost somewhere in the chain and, uh, and it will not uh, fully compile. But in this case, I'm creating, um, I'm, I'm telling, I'm exporting K-build output um, environment variable um, to uh, destination. I need to install that patch. Oops, sorry. Um, the, I need to, we need to patch the, uh, the kernel, um, the self-test make file, actually, to be able to the, the issue here is like if we just cross compile with that dispatch, we're going to use BPF tool of the host machine, which if you're running x86 is a different Indianess than S390X, and is going to, when it goes to the step of BPF tools, uh, BTF dump, uh, it's going to create a VM Linux.h file for the wrong Indianess. Um, so there is a one line patch uh, to be applied. And then we go through the same process of building the kernel, essentially, with a few more um, viable to make. Um, set up the config for the, for the destination architecture, run MR, MR proper, I'm not really sure why, but that's a requirement. All dev config, all, and then the self-test. And then we need uh, a root FS again uh, for the uh, destination architecture. Um, in general, every OS has a Docker image of, uh, of the distribution. So in this case, I'm pulling the, uh, essentially the Docker image from, uh, from Ubuntu for, for the version of my, of my OS. Um, same here, either through Docker 2FS or, or Docker. But then there's a few more subtleties there. These images are usually pretty bare. They have the very minimum, so not enough tool to actually be able to run the test. So you need to shoot into the, into the, uh, the root FS and install uh, a few tools, a few utilities that, that are needed to, to get the setup working. Um, and then we are back to essentially square one um, of testing. We've got our kernel, we've got our root FS, so we can run VM test pass on the kernel, pass the root FS, and, uh, and the architecture, and, and run whichever command we need. Um, there is a link at the bottom. Essentially, as I was hacking on that, I took a few notes uh, that I uploaded to, uh, to GitHub. So if you go to shantra.github.io slash bpfci tools, there's essentially a list of three um, posts, which, are, which is what I've uh, been talking about um, now. Um, as I went through the slides and as, as I made those slides, I realized that there is a fair amount of things which are not working just by copy pasting on the on on my GitHub repo. So I will update those um, sometime after uh, after the conference. But yeah, that's um, pretty much it to either quickly test locally or be able to run stuff that are failing the CI in the same environment, or be able to essentially cross comp run a kernel and test for an architecture that you don't necessarily have the uh, hands-on 
happy to take any questions or comments. And uh, yes, this is very hacky. <laughs> I got these workings uh, working. You know, I guess if people were interested in it, then you know it's worth putting the effort to it. But um, you know, otherwise, it's kind of good enough for me as it is. Um, but you know, happy to spend more time if there's uh, people using. I mean, willing to use it. Any questions, comments? Do you plan to uh, push this to the kernel as documentation? I think it would be nice. It's probably yeah. easier to find than... <laughs> it was... Yeah, I, I, I will need to spend more time on documenting it. I think I spent more time documenting it through those slides than I did spend when I originally did it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, they, it was really like, so far it was a brain dump on what I needed to run to be able to achieve whatever I wanted. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's, I, the, the main issue is there's still a lot of different individual steps that need to be done. But um, yeah, I guess I could try to spend more time and formalize. Uh, I got it in Markdown anyway, because it's in GitHub, so it's pretty easy to export after. Mm. But I think, yeah, I mean, I'm just Sorry thinking in, the in, or whatever. in particular around the S390, right? Like when they, when developers run into issues where, the, where it only fails on the S390 CI, so it would be useful to have these kind of steps so that they can... I mean, that's exactly the reason yeah, exactly. why I spent yeah. time yeah. doing that, because otherwise that... Yeah, otherwise it's quite hard, I agree. And also it's not trivial to do <laughs> without investing time in yeah. the first place. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks.